Hey folks, Quill18 here and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Victoria 2, A House Divided as Japan. And uh, now we own our own little chunk of China that is exciting. Of course, we've, we've had a little bit of a chunk for a little while, but we've grown those holdings. And uh, it would have been funny, it would have been funny if we'd let Sweden take a piece, but mm, a little bit of greed got the better of me. And now we're going to enter uh, more of a, of a sort of industrial phase once more. Uh, at some point we will want to do something about Russia, but uh, I think some people in the comments made some very good points. You know what? I can unpause this and get it going. Made a couple of tweaks to the uh, taxes and started moving some of the um, armies around just to get them back into position here. Um, uh, some people made a very good point that uh, we should be beelining for... Oh! I could have enacted a reform for a second there. I really want to get those going. I know I was hesitating for a while, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and unleash anything that's available and just move in that direction uh, whenever the opportunity presents itself. Um, wow! Rebels in, well, in China itself, of course. Um, the part that's still China. Hmm, can I enter here? No, I can't. They just booted me out totally, huh? I don't want to take some of these home. I do need to leave a few behind for defensive purposes and for rebellion busting purposes, but other than that, we can start to bring them home. I've also moved a bunch of ships here. And actually, I'm going to combine this fleet. Uh, I guess I could have kept the uh, the transports out, but I'm going to split off all the cruisers that are still good. And yeah, I'm going to get rid of the, um, the ironclads. Actually, if we have any here, I just realized this may have been a, a very silly, silly split. Yeah, maybe I just had one fleet full of cruisers here. I guess that makes sense. These are all my, my newer ships. I feel like there's probably a better way to do this. Yeah, cruisers and then steam transports. All right, I guess that's um, that's fine. Now, my ironclads, I believe, are down here. So those are all cruisers. But this fleet, are they all ironclads? And Commerce Raiders, which are even older, uh, they do have cruisers. So we're going to split those off. And we're just going to try to reduce our maintenance. Maybe I should have done this off screen since it's a little bit tedious. There we are. So we're going to disband these guys since there's no way to just upgrade them. But the manpower will go back into the pool and hello, reform. Landed voting, yes. We'll come back and do some more later. Uh, those guys are in good shape. I think we can build dreadnoughts now, right? I wonder what's going to happen after this, uh, this gets cleared up. Okay, so you guys are on that duty. You guys can combine, and then we can get... Um, I suppose they could stay there. It's not the end of the world. Um, these guys are too big. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull them out. Transport fleet, come over here and pick up these guys. We're gonna get them into the sort of main area here to protect against the potential of um, of Russia doing something weird, which could happen. South Pole has returned without success. Uh, yeah, let's try again. The hell, we got money and we want prestige. Just, just because. Okay, I'll drop them off in Heiju. Now, we do have a debt, but it's all in our national bank, and that's actually... Uh, our citizens have invested in the national bank, and by us taking debt out, the interest that we pay is actually going back to our citizenship. Of course, that's really kind of only helping people who already have money, and we actually also tax those at a lower rate. Sounds kind of familiar. Um, but uh, So I'm not freaking out about repaying it, um, I'm gonna see what we can do about that. You know, it'll it'll help move a few more people in the sort of upper and middle classes. Um, not tons of people, but some. Oh, the political reforms enacted in the past few years have led to a situation where the absolutism of our monarchy can now legitimately be called into question. No longer is the king free to dictate the course of the nature the nation to his own musings, but instead has had to accept several constitutional hems and restrictions on his exercise of power. I don't like that. I want to be absolute. 
They say power corruption. Absolute power is kind of awesome. Uh, for these reasons, our government form is no longer most accurately described as an absolute monarchy. So Prussian constitutionalism. Uh, now we have elections. I can appoint a ruling party. But there's going to be elections, which I guess is going to be fine. Um, oh. oh yeah, that's what that icon is. It's the election. Oh, you can actually click on it to see what's going to happen. Now, I believe I can still, yeah, I think I can still change things. Oh, we're finally getting these kinds of questions. I haven't had one of these. I hadn't realized. Why not? The election debates in Osaka region have been going on for a few days now, and the issue that seems to be becoming the determining one for the outcome of the election is, perhaps unsurprisingly, the economy. It's always the economy, right? Several theories are being advanced, but the voters want a clear statement on government policy. How will the government make sure that every Japanese citizen has a chicken in his pot during the coming, coming term in office? As a so famously, I think, I'm pretty sure it was an American politician. Probably someone pretty important. I know made the promise of, you know, well, a chicken in every pot, which doesn't seem like that impressive. But at the time, food, you know, wasn't really quite as plentiful as, in now, as it is now. And the ability to have, like, you know, a whole chicken to eat was kind of a big deal, if I recall correctly. You know, most people were still just eating sort of grain. Um, so do we want to go more laissez-faire? Um, which I think is the sort of direction we want to go. We, we really do want to liberalize as much as possible. And because people get confused about what this means in the comments all the time, this is the actual meaning of the word liberal, um, which sort of libertarians espouse, for example, is the sort of like, you know, this laissez-faire sort of thing. You know, let the government, small government, government gets out of the way, capitalists take over, that sort of thing. I'm not meant to like, I'm not sitting here endorsing anything real or not, but that's the sort of direction we're taking our nation in, uh, in because that's, that's the way that the imperials move. Um, and that's what Japan is trying to imitate here. The other options are uh, interventionism, state capitalism, or planned economy. Either way, uh, we're sh sort of shifting people in one direction and pissing off some other people, but either way, it's going to be fine. Right now, no one wants less AFI. So we're actually going to, if we really want to play our odds the best, what we do is... Um, go for planned economy, which would only piss off the less AFI people, of which there are none. But I am actively want to shift people over, so we're going to see what we can do about that. So there might be a little bit of extra militancy, but I don't think militancy in our actual core is a problem. I mean, we do have some, uh, some rebellion still sort of fomenting, but it's not that troublesome. Uh, we'll move you up there. There's probably going to be... Um, Patrician over in that end. I couldn't think of that word for some reason. Okay, Yamaguchi, ah, uh, religion. That's a good question. Where do we want to move towards? Atheism, secularism, pluralism, or moralism? And again, if you know, we really want to try to um, to keep people happy in this case, we would probably go towards moralism. Um, you know, sort of align ourselves that way. But you know, what's what's the sort of advantage and disadvantages of whatever? I don't know. Do we want to? Do we want to secularize? Become hardcore atheists? I think maybe we'll move towards secularism. Um, you know, religion doesn't get involved in politics. The government is a religious, you know, not not atheist, but a religious, not religious at all. I, I think uh, that's probably a good direction to move into. What does America want? An alliance. Ah, oh, that's right. It broke the alliance when they didn't come and join us in the war. Someone else did as well, but I don't think they're as important as the U.S. Um, you guys, we're going to take the bigger group, get you on a boat, and ship you off over here. Hmm, these rebels are really kicking butt in China. I wonder, are they nationalist rebels? I haven't really looked. Futurism, more prestige. Same thing, we're going to go secularism. Chinese army, are they just retaking it? Is that it? I think that's Chinese reactionaries. They might be retaking it. We'll see what happens. Belgium is quite a bit of competition here. We do have max priority, although it's not the only place where we're spending our influence. They are in our sphere, but I want to make sure that no one else comes in there. I guess I could do a discredit, couldn't I? I didn't realize it was so cheap. Um, we're going to discredit the Netherlands, since they're friendly. I don't know if it's going to affect them the same way. 
but it's going to reduce their ability to spend. Meanwhile, our relation's good, right? Yeah, totally maxed out. Awesome. Hmm, debate about trade. Ah, protectionism versus free trade. And again, we're going to go towards free trade as much as possible here. Oh, people are totally in favor of that, which is good, so we're not going to be upsetting anyone. Because there's that would generate a lot of militancy. Four, if we went this way, 100% of the people gain four militancy, that would be dangerous. Um, but yeah, free trade, free trade, liberalism, all that, yeah, that's, that's the direction we're moving in. Really no attrition over here, I'm quite surprised. Demand concessions against the Chinese by the Russians. That's interesting. That's very interesting. Um, really? We still don't have dreadnoughts? Steam turbine ships? Oh. Yeah, that's... That's kind of important. Mmm... <clears throat> There we go, secularism. Just going to keep moving that direction. All the political turmoil does have a chance of raising uh, militancy overall, but I think we're mostly okay. So if Russia declares war on China, what's that going to mean for us? Uh, free trade. I don't know. Oh, we have a rebellion. It's going to be put down pretty quickly. Like, seriously, I know we can't form uh, that. They should just jump in with us. We'd protect them from the Russians. It's not really an option. Uh, winning a bunch of battles. <sighs> Anarcho-liberals. That's kind of a pain in the ass. Okay, there we go. That's good. Um, so, yeah, we do want tanks. But I really should have gotten this ages ago. We've got to unlock the, the dreadnoughts. Dreadnoughts are are really, really key. We're actually 10 years behind the uh, when, when it opens up. We want, um, they say fire. So, and we're, I mean, we're going to win every battle as long as we don't miss one. That's the only potential problem here. If we miss a siege that goes on too long. Free trade. Going to get a lot of those decisions for the next little bit here. I think all the rebellions are... Oh, that's going to be a little bit annoying. Actually, I have a few troops over here, don't I? Uh, maybe not enough. Let's um, just split off. A tiny group. Yeah, that is going to be very tiny. Get our transports. We really don't need the entire transport fleet. What the hell? It's easier than breaking them up. Elections. Oh, wow, we have a lot of freaking parties. It's a coalition of conservatives and reactionaries. will form the basis of government. I guess we're not having any, um, any reforms anytime soon. They're very unlikely to support anything. More wins. So, occupation... Oh, really? Are you not... Get on to rebel hunting. Okay, it's going to be taken care of. And the rest is all mainland... Actually, I'm not entirely sure. We're going to we're gonna have to manually move someone over there. Hmm. Okay, good. You get on a ship... And then come down. I don't remember. Oh, I guess we're fine. Yay. Grab the ships and just go over there. Mongolia. Now, we are fighting the Russians here for influence. The Russians who are already friendly. Yeah, they're really going to want to sphere them. 
And we're friendly too. Could have increased our relations maybe with them. So, upper house. Ooh, lots of liberal support, which is good. Got war games, our military is slightly better. Friendly. Good. More army speed, which is not bad. I'll take it. Um, oh, I have money, which means I should be... Oh, yeah, that's right. I was building some railroads in Mongolia. Just to help spread a little bit more influence over here. Okay, we lost the general. That's not the end of the world. Uh, Egypt, can we... Uh, yeah. Yeah. We can also build some factories over there, which maybe we should do. Nitroglycerin is good. So as we can pay off some of our debt, we've got a lot of money sitting around. We could probably lower taxes as well, too. Although, like, our wars are so expensive is part, part of the problem. You know, national debt, lots of wars. Again, where have I heard this before? All right, we'll drop the middle tax tax down to 20% and the poor tax down to 25%. I guess the education can be maxed out again. I think here is fine. 90% is fine for administration. Uh, that's going to be shut down pretty easily. Very easily. Okay. Oh, no research set. So... Uh, good. Steam turbines came in. We just need to discover dreadnoughts. If we had naval logistics, it would come in a little faster. Hmm. I don't know. I really want tanks as well, which probably needs to... I can't remember. Is it here? There we go. So we need infiltration. We do need two levels to get the tanks. It's going to be pretty important, though. Yeah, all right, let's, let's go down this branch. I mean, we are naval power, but the, the naval stuff really hasn't come up that much. <clears throat> and I am thinking that we're going to get into some more land wars in Asia. And uh, that's never gone bad. So I'm actually wondering if we should almost change our, um, our research doctrine. But I'll go down. I'll go down here uh, to infiltration. Get armor. And then upgrade our army that way. And then do something else. Wars in the world. Oh, and you know what? People want to see a kind of an overview. Danish liberation of Holstein. Baden Conquest of Bavarian Rhineland, Swiss War of Russian Freedom, Switzerland versus Austria, the Ottomans versus Austria, Württemberg versus Bavaria. Oh, Bavaria is in two wars. So China is still nicely broken up. There's still British India over here. Yeah, there's a lot of wars going on. Holy cow, that's a lot of stripey, stripey lines. Stripey, stripey lines means conquest. So this is all being occupied by Denmark. So go Denmark. Whoa, that tech came fast. I, mean, I know it's a slightly older tech. Some sphere work in Switzerland. No. Oh, I was misreading. I'm like, I'm not at 50. What the hell? There we are. Increase opinion. We're now friendly with Switzerland. Um, good, good. Hmm. Crazy Europe. Crazy Europe is crazy. Strasbourg. I bet you Germany's got cores on this. Yeah. 
I wonder if France starts with this section or if they've gained it at some point. I don't know. Upper house rearranged. Slightly less liberals, but other than that. Grievous insult. A group of Japanese citizens who left Japan some time ago on an expedition to Bhutan been viciously refused entry to the country. It appears the Bhutanese government has turned gradually to policy of increasing isolationism. Ah. Uh, lose prestige. Militancy from the jingoists and the pro-military. No, we, we, can't, we can't put up with that. So... Right over here. Yeah, you're in the British sphere. So we're not actually going to declare war on you. We could, but we're not going to. Add to sphere. Bam. Mongolia. Very nice. And we'll have to ally with them at some point. That is really, really exceptionally nice. Because um, I was a little worried about the implications if... Uh, if Russia got them. But now, if there's a war against Russia, we're going to have more land, more territory for us to walk freely through, uh, more allies. They're going to be kind of craptastic allies, but they're still, you know, they're something. Um, ah, Netherlands! To cordial? Are they not in our sphere anymore? They're not. They were in our sphere, were they? Yeah. Oh, man. Fracking Netherlands. Yeah, we even have factories and everything here. So our expense, expense should be pretty good. Oh. Other people have quite a few investments. Maybe we should add more investments. Yeah, we can build two more factories, and so let's go ahead and do that. They don't... Do they already have a machine parts? Fuel refinery? No, machine parts seems like a good investment. Yeah, sure, more fuel refineries. I didn't even check to see if they were profitable or not. Sounds good. What the hell? We have money to burn. Let's burn it. Hey, we're back in number three. Even though our military size has gone down. They're general. But that's because I disbanded those ships, right? And we haven't rebuilt the new ones yet. Enraged over their situ social situation, the lack of work, and the government's policies, an angry mob of unemployed workers spurred on by agitation from local troublemakers has attacked the workhouse in one of our provinces. Several workhouse buildings have been looted, and bread and supplies to a total value of several thousands have been stolen. Local officials have been swift in putting down the attack and in arresting the ringleaders, but the incident will have a lasting effect for years. What directives do we give the cabinet on the issue? What is the government's position? There were legitimate grievances. 50% more liberal in that region, and more plurality, or an unprovoked attack. Militancy and lose plurality. This is definitely a direction we want to go into. Plurality is a double-edged sword. It, it gives people, like, it, it's related to consciousness and all this. It's the idea of, like, multiple sort of ideas swirling around, and, and the idea that there, there's not just one way of doing everything. So it actually improves your research, but also increases the demand for political reforms, which aren't necessarily the end of the world either. Although, if you're... Um, somehow in a situation where you can't um, actually enact them, then it can lead to some militancy. Very likely, even though they hate us. Cool. Very good. Well, I put that away a little too fast. Oh, okay, good. Uh, activates barrels. Barrel factories, really? Couldn't make barrels before? It's 1912. I know for a fact people were making barrels by that point. Okay. Um, to help unlock this, I will pick up naval logistics. 
And then it'll probably be tech. I know I keep doing that. Ah, Belgium. At least we're still allied and we have a great relationship with them. British troops are moving around. Oh. <gasps> the Franco Prussian War. Which is funny because if you say it like wrongly, it sounds like the Franco Prussian War. Or oppression War. Like the Franks are oppressing us. The Franco Prussian War. I wrote, read an article today that discussed uh, the idea that. Really, what we think of as World War One and Two and all this was really a sort of modern hundred years war that started with the Franco-Prussian War. Um, the Franco-Prussian War it represents one of the first major wars that France really lost um, after being like a gargantuan power for ages and ages and ages. Um, and they they you know had to I think the I think that sort of took down the French emperor. And they had to sign, you know, a humiliating concession. And then in World War II, it was Germany that had to sign it. And then that set the, the, the stage for World War II. And, um, wow. All right, let's, let's take a look. Franco-Prussian War. France and Spain on one side. On the other side, the UK... Switzerland. Switzerland is not neutral. Yeah, so basically, like, Germany... Germany and the UK, Italy, yeah, Prussia, Prussia, um, and Switzerland versus France and Spain. I don't have my armor yet. That's the problem. I'm like, oh, I could, I could, you know, Siam, ooh, ooh, India, ooh. I don't have armor. I'm gonna get torn apart. France. What has France done for me? Well, didn't they do something for me earlier? I, I don't think I, I'm going to join up on this. I'm really worried about, like, British troops just giving me a bad time over here. And I'm not going to get anything from this war, so I'll have to decline. Sorry, France. Oh, my military power. Oh, it's because everyone else in the world just activated their military. That's why their strength is so much higher. All right, that's fine. What's the timer on this? A little bit longer, and then I have to end this episode. We're still encouraging clerks in a bunch of places, and I... Prussia wants military access. No. Okay, that's good. Go away. Um, this surplus of clerks, yeah. So we can keep focusing clerks, that's fine. It's going to improve our, um, our industrial capacity good. Oh, it's the second expedition we lose. No, let's keep going. What the hell? Keep throwing money and people at it. Who cares? We have, like, unlimited money. We're going to bank up, though, because there's going to be a big, huge fracking war at some point, and I want to make sure that we are 100% prepared. We need a gargantuan bank for that. Oh, discredited by the Netherlands. They've been a thorn in my side for ages. Um, can I help Mongolia with their rebel problem? Combine, split, I, I, I don't know if I'm actually going to be fighting these rebels or not. I kind of would like to help. Okay. That's good. Um, culture, penalty, commerce, bonus. That's pretty good. Industry is also pretty good. Um, diplomatic influence. Actually, that sounds like a pretty good idea. Pretty sure if we get mo modern central bank, we unlock a decision as well. Oh, you know what? Let's max out our factory efficiency. You know, it's like a later tech and it's going to be more expensive, but I think it's a good idea. We're, we're a very industrial nation, so I think it's a good idea. I don't think they really need our help, but I still feel like... Yeah, okay, good, we'll fight the rebels. Tank exploits. That's good, we don't actually have tanks yet, but...
Oh, I can help liberate this as well. Threshing axon. It is, is it, I ask this government, of this government, right that a man with a life of hard and honest work behind him should be left without aid or assistance merely on account of the whims of fate. Ah, a farmer in one of our states has had a near fatal threshing accident which has left him permanently disabled and disfigured. The case has been brought to the national scene of parliament, parliamentary debates over the Japanese pension system, where reform-minded MPs have used the case as a bat with which to beat the government for not doing more to help the old and disabled. Um, really, I instantly would get the trinket pensions decision. Lots of consciousness from conservatives. And a little bit of militancy. And that's everywhere. All pops in all of Japan. Which is probably a lot. 79% um, of Japan is conservative. So I don't think I can just force this through. Well, consciousness is not terrible. But no, they're going to want to revoke stuff. It's a little too much. Um, and this is just one little region where we're going to do a little bit of favor for trinket pensions or ignore uh, and insult all farmers. I think we're going to go with this. I, I am in favor of going and where would that be? That's trinket pensions. Right, so state pensions would get a little bit. You get some immigrant attraction. Like, it's a good idea, I think. But yeah, local support. We'll just have to hedge our bets there. Play it a little bit neutral. Ammunition conservation system. Why do we need to conserve ammo? Just fire more of it. Bang, bang, bang. Workhouse. Again. Yeah, more liberal is fine. Spain wants military access. Against the UK and everything? Yeah, no, you know what? I'm, I'm in favor of this. I'll, I'll give you military access. And if France wants it, I'll give it to them as well. Just won't join their war. Reactionaries. Okay, we got a lot of pop-ups all of a sudden. We won the occupation. So that's good. So we can take these guys and move them back here. We're going to build some more forts along the uh, Russian border as well. All right, so close this, close that. It's all on the main uh, mainland? Okay, well that's going to get squashed really fast. General died. Battles won. Expand. 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 More reactionaries. You know, I hate killing my own populace here. They should just stop reactionaring. General died of old age. Uh, that is technically a, a vulnerability there, so. Are you not set? First of all, we're going to split you in two. Olympics. Yes, of course we'll attend. No military access for the UK. How's that war going, by the way? Um, yeah. Good for, like, UK plus Germany together. Bad for France and Spain. Obviously. Like, that's that's one of the other reasons I didn't want to join the war. Like, there ain't nothing I'm going to get. Uh, military access. Yes, I will give you military access, though. I will. I will let you do that. I won't fight your, your stupid war. Well, I guess you got declared on, I think. Factory output, plus 3%. I think that's good. Saddle orders, that's good too. Um, more influence. Oh. Someone's trying to gain influence in Denmark here. Probably could have done a more decisive change, actually. Uh, 
Are we really lower than these guys? Jeez. Number four, industrial power. It's not bad. I'd like more. We've got... Oh, no, I can't build factories. Oman. Where's Oman? Ah, here. Allied with Yemen, Kalat, and Kutch. Now, they might have... They don't have cascading alliances. Oh, these are all ironclad. Uh, not all ironclads, but I can disband some of them. I'd forgotten about these guys. I think we might go to war. Um... I might. Oh, up here. <laughs> wrong, uh, wrong little peninsula here. Uh, I think we might go to war with these guys. I didn't realize that these guys are not allied with anyone particularly powerful. Abu Dhabi's actually in my sphere. I should just conquer Yemen and Oman. I've got, I've got some, some infamy to spare. Right? It's Twenty-five is the limit. Pfft, easy. Um, yeah, okay, I'm going to end this episode here, but I'm pretty sure the next time we start, it's just going to be uh, a little war over here. Like, we might just take the, we can take the infamy free, um, cut down the size, cost his belly over here, where we just get some of their income tax, which is fun. It probably doesn't count for much, but, you know, what the hell. And while we're at it, we can justify a war goal against Yemen. I don't know if they're particularly... They have got some opium. Uh, I don't think they're particularly valuable right now, but conceivably they might get oil over here at some point. I don't know. Anyway, that's it for this episode. I will see you guys next time.